Okay, we are now recording. Okay, uh, so welcome everyone to the Amherst Energy and Climate Action Committee, um, which was organized to guide the town <clears throat> in meeting its climate mitigation and resilience goals. Those goals and the plans for getting, for achieving them uh, are adopted from the Climate Action Adaptation and Resilience Plan, or the CARP, which was accepted by the town council back in 2021. Uh, the CARP took 2016 as its base year and calls for a 25% reduction in carbon emissions by 2025, that's coming up very quickly, 50% by 2030 and carbon neutrality by 2050. So this committee has two primary functions. One of them is to advise the town and recommend or propose policies or actions that will help us meet the climate goals. And the other is to promote a just, equitable, and speedy climate response through outreach and engagement of town and local stakeholders. So with that, we open today's meeting and start with the agenda. Um, although the first thing we always need to do that isn't on the agenda is assign a note taker. And I think looking at last week's minutes, Don, would you like to give it a try? I think Jesse did it last time, right? Just going down the list. Sure. Let me just get my pad out. Okay. All right. And with that, right. the first thing that we do is um, review the, and vote on the minutes from the last meeting. So I have the minutes here, which I will share. Minutes, share. Make them a little bit bigger. Review guys where I can see you. Okay, can everybody see that okay? Doesn't need to be bigger. Yeah, can you make it a little bit bigger? Yes, I can do that. Um, if I can find the, hang on a minute. Here, let me just do this. No, that didn't work. Wait. There we go. The um, Zoom bar is page width, and then I'll make the page a little bigger. There we go. How's that? Better. Thank you. Okay. So last time we had a list of local groups from Tony. There was some news on the heat pumps front. There were questions about what questions to include in the rental building efficiency bylaw. Ongoing discussion of the solar bylaw. Or we a suggestion that we change this topic to broadly cover all things solar. I don't know if we did that this week or not, but we should if we didn't. Tell me if I'm going too fast or too slow. A lot of good staff updates. And I think that was it. Laura's gonna find us a jolt of energy. There's there's more. Uh yeah, there we oh, go. Sorry, there is more. Yes, yes, there is more. Mm -hmm. I think I have two suggestions. Um, one is under 4B, the solar bylaw. Um, the last sentence about the UMass Solar Forum, I don't know if it needs to say we'll include Steve Roof. It included a bunch of us. Um, I don't think it's fair to single me out uh -uh. in that comment. <laughs> <laughs> Dwayne did so much to organize that. Um, <laughs> I, you know, maybe I could just say the UMass Solar Forum and with the website there. Lori. Okay, thanks, Steve. Lori, I'll make those corrections because okay. right. um, then I can keep track of that. So okay. I'll keep note I'll of it. Do that. All right. Thank you. Then the only other thing was that, that under item seven, Drucker will find a jolt of energy. I'm not sure that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> it might have at the moment, um, but in terms of minutes, it may not be all that helpful. 
Yeah, so I don't know if I can be held accountable for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just added a jolt of energy right there. <laughs> if, it saves us, if it saves a lot of greenhouse gas emissions, we'll, we'll keep it. <laughs> this is stuff Jesse puts in to make sure we actually read the minutes. Yes. <laughs> I did. I did mean to write. Trucker will find a jolt of renewable energy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that can that can be taken out if we must. I'd leave it up to Laura. All right. I, yeah, I think Laura didn't want to. Be yeah, it kind of sounds like I'll find a jolt of energy for myself, which I think is challenging. But I think <laughs> what we're trying to say is. I, I think we can take it out. I don't think it makes con. It's not in context outside of the meeting. So yeah, okay. yeah. I'll take it out. You, you were looking for something new to focus on, and uh, hopefully we'll discuss that a little bit more today. Um, all right. So any move to accept minutes? So um, Lori, if you with the changes, can you um, shut out the minutes so we can see everybody? There we go. But we don't have a move yet. Yeah. I will move okay. to accept the minutes as edited. Second. 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 Dwayne seconds. Okay, and in no particular order, please make sure you're not muted. Goldner? Yes. Roof? Yes. Selman? Yes. Allison? Abstain. Gregor? Yes. Hissing? Yes. And Drucker. Yes. Minutes are approved as amended. The next item of business is always uh, taking comments from the public. So we have one attendee today. Would that attendee like to make a comment at this point or a question? If you would just raise your virtual hand. If not, then we will move on. Um, okay, let me get back to my notes. Okay, so we're at the um, education and outreach part of our agenda. And the first thing on the agenda is an update on PACE. Don, you got Sorry, anything? I don't have one. Nope, no update on PACE. Anything else to chat about on that? Um, Lori, I would just maybe when we discuss the um, solar RFP, that that might sort of come into play a little bit then as an update. The solar, or you mean the... Uh, Did I say solar? I meant heat pump. I'm sorry. Yes. Wow. Yeah, I agree. The heat is getting to me. Um, yes, I will mention something then. Yeah, okay. Um Tony is not here, but I did want to mention later something, uh, the coordination with local groups. So last week, uh, we got a list of local groups from Tony McElrath, and we added to it a few, or we meant to add to it a few um, additional groups. And later, we're going to talk about recruiting members, since we're losing three members, or have, we'll have lost three members uh, by the end of this month. Um, we need to do some serious recruiting. So we'll talk a little bit more about that later and maybe using that list. I can think of a lot of things actually to do with that list. So we'll get to them right now, I think, because heat pumps is up next. Um, so I have some interesting updates on heat pumps that are separate from the RFP that I think, um, Stephanie, do you want to do that as part of staff updates or do you want to do that now? Um, it, it doesn't matter. Why don't you uh, talk about your other stuff update first? Okay, so there's a couple of interesting things going on in the area and in the state. Uh, last time I didn't have my notes with me and I hadn't prepared, I hadn't had time to prepare, but um, there's a neighbor in my three doors down from me who got a Mass CEC decarbonization pathways program grant. Has anyone heard of those? Well, they're a little obscure, but I wanna bring this up because it's interesting. And apparently she's in their third cohort and they may, it says it's closed. Um, but it looks like she's in their third cohort and that's not even listed here. So maybe they're not closed. Um, I'm going to share this screen just so you guys can see this. I'll put the, let me put the link in my, in the, uh, oh, I can't put a link in the chat, can I? Um, okay, so let me just share this then. Okay. 
So this is the mass CEC. Uh, oh, can you guys see that okay? This is the mass CEC um, decarbonization pathways program. And the pilot took 75 homes throughout the Commonwealth, one of which is right here on Aldenwood Road, uh, whose owners are interested in decarbonizing. And it's taking my neighbor through this entire, it's actually very interesting, through a whole, pro she's getting geothermal most likely, um, almost certainly actually. She, they're gonna put in a geothermal system for her. And um, they're providing everything from sort of beginning to end in the terms of not so much in terms of money. I don't know how big the grant itself actually is, but they're providing uh, coaching. They sent her out for bids to a couple different local providers. Um, they're there almost every week talking her through the next part of the process for decarbonization, decarbonizing her house. And it is a you know relatively complicated, it's a hydronic system uh, and they're still trying to figure out whether they're going to use that or whether they're going to go to an air source system, an air to uh, ground to air system. It looks like she has enough. Well, it's all technical stuff, but anyway, it's it's interesting to watch, and it's interesting how much they're providing to her in the way of support for making this really enormous change um, to the way her property is heated. She's lucky in that. She has a flat front yard they can put, they're gonna put two wells, two 300 foot wells, I think, spaced at 30 feet or something like that uh, in order to get enough uh, capacity. And I just thought it's something that if it's open again, like I said, she said she's in the third cohort. Um, so even though this says closed, it's still ongoing and who knows, maybe there'll be a fourth cohort. So this is something to keep, you know, if there is a, I think it's clever that they did a hydronic system that's gas powered because that's most of our homes, a lot of our homes around here, right? Uh, that's the big problem in Massachusetts. So if there's other examples of homes that, you know, make good pilots for how this would work. And that sort of dovetails with the other thing that I did in the last week, which is actually just today, I went to a very interesting, I'm going to stop sharing now. Um, uh, actually, this had one other thing I wanted to show. Where was it? Oh, no, that's the other one. Never mind. I'm going to keep sharing because I also want to show, if I can find it here. Gloria, is that strictly for homes, private homes? Or? Yeah, uh, I think it's, well, it says individual homes. Right. I see that single family homes, multifamily with four or fewer units. Yeah. All yeah. units must participate. So oh, yeah, it's not for home. condos, not for commercial buildings, yeah. not right. for newer buildings. And it's not clear. And, and the award potential is is limited. I mean, the, the change she's doing to this house is going to cost one hundred thousand bucks. It's a big, you know, it's a lot of money to put in one of these systems. So the award potential doesn't look like it's that much, but there are probably lots of other incentives they're helping her find, right? So on top of the other incentives, there's this additional. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, so it's an interesting, interesting thing. And along with that, the, the other thing I did is I went to a Wellesley, and let's see if I can find that one. Hang on a minute. Um, I have it right here. Uh, I went to a Heat Smart energy coaches meeting that happens monthly and they had Wellesley Mass uh, reporting on their energy coaching program. And unfortunately I missed a large part of it. Whoops, where'd it go? There we go. Because my internet wasn't working properly. Um, but they had a couple of interesting ideas and interesting things that they do. And I thought I would show this because I think this is the sort of thing, Stephanie, that would complement the heat pump program uh, in a lot of ways. So uh, these Wellesley, town of Wellesley has, I think it's four volunteer coaches in one page. Lisa Wolf is staff there. She's the sustainability director at their municipal light plant. And she also runs this program and they're gonna be hiring somebody new to just run the coaching program. And I think they're gonna, I think maybe even paying coaches. I'm not quite sure how that works. I think these are all these, most of these people are on their energy and climate action committee, right? So their coaches are, <laughs> I think three of them at least are from their local committee. Um, so I think they're, they're volunteers. Um, and they start 
by, you know, you go into the town website, you fill out a questionnaire, which is essentially the heat smart. Um, it's the heat smart questionnaire for coaching. It's the same one that I use when I coach, uh, except it's done as a Google form, which I think is sort of brilliant. And so they fill this out and then they're funneled into the system and they get a coach assigned to them. And that coach, they coordinate with Mass CEC um, so that the coach often actually shows up at the uh, audit, at the energy audit, which is always the first step if they haven't done an energy audit. So the coach from the start gets a better view of what needs to be done and gets to actually interact with the, I mean, this is really important because the homeowners often don't know what to ask, right? You get a, you get a coach, you get an energy audit in, you don't know how to ask for a blower door test. You know, you don't know, you don't know to ask questions about ceiling here or there above and beyond what they're willing to do for free. Um, and that's something that an energy coach can help with. So they start right in at the energy audit. They do a couple of other really interesting things that I thought were worth mentioning. Um, the coaches do a once a month energy, uh, what do they call it? Uh, environment, uh, climate cafe at the local library where they just invite people in to ask questions. Uh, it can be informal coaching or they could sign up for more formal coaching. Um, so I just thought this was interesting enough that I should mention it. Uh, Local Energy Advocates is talking about putting their own coaching program together, and maybe this is what they had in mind, in which case we could just piggyback on them, just, you know, direct residents to their program, uh, which I would certainly participate in myself if they do it. Um, but at any rate, I just thought it was an interesting way to do things. I don't know, Stephanie, if you were aware of this or not, but... Um, it looked interesting. I'll, I'll stop sharing now. And um, is is this primarily for Wellesley residents? It's only Wellesley. Okay. They have so their own. It, it, yeah, and it's modeled completely after the Heat Smart Alliance's coaching program. In fact, all of their materials, their liability form, their um, the way they their their coaches undergo continuous training, meaning that they meet once a month to talk about stuff, or they go to Heat Smart meetings on technologies. Heat Smart has all of these different monthly working groups that discuss technology, that discuss the coaching process, that discuss, and they're all pretty interesting. And so I think they participate in some of those or they have their own local group. Um, there's just a whole list of things that HeatSmart uh, recommends you do if you're gonna to put together a coaching program. Um, so I, I didn't realize that, that they were spinning off things like this. He, HeatSmart itself only gets something like uh, 10 to 20 requests a month for coaches. But I think Wellesley gets a lot more, <laughs> is what it sounds like. And this is spun off, you know, it's spun off from the Heat Smart model. So, Do you think the town sponsorship has a, an advantage of getting more people to take advantage of the program? Absolutely. Yeah, that that's absolutely has. Yeah, <laughs> um, they they seem to and they seem to be coupling it with uh, some other incentive programs they have. I, I don't think they have a heat pump program quite the way we have, Stephanie, but they seem to be working with they have a contract with Abode to do some of the consulting and this sort of thing. So they have some some sort of a heat pump program going um, and the coaches sort of complement that. Um, I didn't quite understand how all that was put together because my internet kept dropping out, but, <laughs> but uh, it, it really looked, and of course, they're a much larger town than we are with many more resources, and they have somebody who's running the program for them, which I don't think is something we have the capacity to do, but LEA could do that, right? They could put together, there could be a local group that does this for towns in the area um, that, we could, that we could make use of. So along with all that, um, I'll let Stephanie. Why don't you go ahead and talk about the heat pump RFP then now, because that's pretty pretty exciting. Yeah, I mean I can't say a lot yet because um, we haven't finalized the the um, decision making yet, and really we don't have a lot of choice because one of our proposals did not meet the minimum qualifications, so that reduced us to the one that we had, which was though a very good one we believe. Um, so can't say too, too much about it in terms of specifics, but I do think, um, there was several, um, several mentions of the PACE program and helping to get people and businesses informed about the PACE program. So in terms of what we've been talking about and what we've been looking for, I think, um, if once we move forward with this, I think that will be, um, 
education about PACE will be built into our heat pump efforts. So that's specifically what I wanted to mention because they were related, but um, but also in terms of our RFP, uh, right now I'm just collecting references. And I will say that two out of the three references that I had to follow up with um, have been glowing. So um, with virtually nothing negative to say. So um, I will be very excited when we can tell you who that is and announce it for sure, for real. Um, but just know that it is moving forward. And I think, um, you know, we'll be, I'm just going to give it another day or so. And if we don't hear from the third reference, we can still move forward with our rating. It won't be as solid, but I think we've only got one and it's going to be solid anyway. So um, I think we're in good shape and I'm really excited actually. Um, having reviewed the RFP more closely and had a conversation with Lori about it. And um, of course, ultimately, I will say that the decision is really up to the town manager. So we're just making the recommendation, but it is the only proposal that we received, but we both think that's reasonable. We'll do, it's the, it's the appropriate, you know, vendor. And I think we feel like it'll be a really strong program. So um, that's the recommendation we'll make. And I, I really don't think the town manager would want to reopen this again. I think he'll be comfortable with moving forward. So I just wanted to give that much of an update at this point. Okay, any questions or comments on heat pumps? If not, I still got nothing on climate resilient schools. So, um, don't have anything to add there from what we heard a while back. So going on to our advisory and support mission. Um, Steve, any updates or Stephanie, any updates? We, where we left off last week was we were going to get a couple of questions to, what was it? The building commissioner. Building commissioner. So I did, I did forward those along from Steve. Um, and it sounds like they will get folded into the inspections process, but it sounds like all of them will, all three will. So uh, I wasn't told we can only put one of these on the application. I think, um, you know, I think at this point it was just folded into the inspections process, but it will include all three. Okay. You, you so, mean, Stephanie, the application? Or the inspection? No, the inspection, not the application. It'll be the inspection. But it will be because I think the way when you narrowed it down and what we're looking for is something the inspectors, I think, will be able to easily um, respond to. And I can talk to them about how we can maybe extract that information. I can follow up about that is like how that would work. But yeah. for right now, I'm just... Any progress on getting these things included anywhere, I was encouraged by. Yeah, that, that that's encouraging. Um, I did not expect that they would want to add additional things for their in-person inspections. And our ask was more about putting it in the application. Yes. Um, I guess the only, I mean, the advantage then is that it's something confirmed by an inspector, not guessed at by whoever's filling out the application. So that increases the quality of it. Yeah. On the other hand, the number of inspections per year is a small fraction of the total number of permits. So it will, I guess it would take several years to accumulate the data as they, is, is the idea, I think I remember the idea is that after five years, they'll they'll get around to inspecting all rental properties. Is that I, yeah, I think that I, I don't know the time frame, but I know that that was ultimately the goal. Like it'll be yeah. a different set of properties, you know, each so time. How do inspections work? Are they automatic upon application or are they just going around and starting inspections? At they don't go unit. Well, if you think of because think about how many rental units, actual units we have, they don't inspect every single rental unit. So I think the idea was to have units that are kind of representative of a block of like in a building, have some that are representative and then they'll sort of make their way through, excuse me, over time um, to get to all, but they can't do everything every year. Right. 
But what, what initiates getting on the inspection list? Is that just being a rental unit or do you have to apply and then you go on a list? You know what I mean? Is it like this unit's going to... It's a new, but this is a somewhat new process, right? I tweaked it yep. a bit. So this is not, it hasn't been implemented yet, Lori. Okay. So I don't, I can't speak to it exactly, but Steve, as a, you know, as someone who is a landlord, maybe you have a better sense of how you deal with it now. I, my, my memory is a bit fuzzy. Uh, my recollection was that an inspection could be triggered by a complaint, a noise complaint or other complaint about unsafe conditions. That's how it has worked in the past. Inspections, I believe, were only done if a complaint was raised. Um, so I think that could, remains. Could also be could also be the someone from the building department just drives by and sees you know, ah. 12, 12 cars in the driveway. It's like, huh, this is a two unit rental, right? And then they they can come. They, they it's at their discretion as well. They and then I think there. I think their plan is over the course of five years to try to do enough inspections to basically inspect all of the parcels. And as, as Stephanie said, if if it's a place of a lot of apartments, they'll look at a handful of representative apartments, not every single one. If it's a two family house on a parcel, I believe they'll inspect both units. Um, but because the inspection force is small, it'll take several years for them to get to all of the rental properties. That's the plan, I believe. I, my memory is fuzzy and I haven't looked at the details. Okie doke. Um, I, hear, I hear because I'm a landlord, I get some messages that you know, some of the other landlords and property owners are um, not real happy with it. And there was rumors or talk about possibly challenging challenging the regulations. Hard to imagine how a requirement for an inspection in the rental unit could be challenged. Seems to me like any other. There's complications because it means that um, inspectors will have to have access to the apartment and that will require permission from right. the tenants. Right. And I think there were some other elements that required sharing the lease. And so there were some privacy issues around that. So there were some aspects like that that last I heard still needed to be worked out and also made it more difficult for property owners to sort of manage these inspections, trying to interface between the inspectors and the tenants. Right. Hmm. Anyway, this, uh, that sounds good that we'll at least start to collect some of that information that we've been hoping for. Um, yeah. And at least after a year or two, there may be some information that we can start to work with. Yeah. Good. Anything else on the rental bylaw, building efficiency in the rental bylaw? No. Then go on to solar. Dwayne, got any updates for us? Um, no, we did have, uh, um, the solar Western mass solar forum part two yesterday. Uh, thanks Steve for your participation. Thank you, Stephanie, for your participation. Thank you for anybody else who attended. Um, I think we've gotten some really good feedback. Um, and I'm still digesting and recovering <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Put <it> that way. <laughs> uh, we will be, um, we've been working today on the, on the um, recording, which will be posted, the transcript, which will be posted, uh, the Q and A, uh, which, which pretty robust um, will be posted as well. Um, uh, probably sometime uh, by the end of the week or, or early next week. Uh, but um Wonderful to have um, Senator Comerford and Mindy Dom participate in that and help help with that. Uh, we had good kickoff with um, Under Secretary Mike Judge from EEA, the two the two TUE uh, telecommunic telecommunications utilities and energy um, um, joint legislative um, committee co chairs, uh, Senator Barrett and Representative Roy provide some uh, good comments at the beginning. 
uh, to kick things off. Uh, a lot of this focused on uh, solar and siting recommendations of the siting commission, siting and permitting commission, um, and the legislation that is in progress uh, till the end of the legislative session at the end of July. Uh, so it was purposefully time timely in that regard. Um, uh, and that's why we 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 with, with Joe and Mindy's um, uh, urging uh, put it on at this point. Um, uh, the 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 idea is we will be sharing those the video and the and the Q and A's and the com and really comments with the legislators. Um, and um, they've actually reached out already, at least uh, Jeff Roy's office, um, to say that it was helpful and they wanted to see the transcript and video because uh, they're working on these issues right now. So the idea was really to give a voice uh, of Western Massachusetts um, in this process because uh, we're, we're quite frankly fairly front and center in this, at least for the solar side. Um, and um, I think it, it um, provided that forum as well as education for attendees and, and perhaps um, enable them to provide more useful um, and targeted comments to legislators and the, and the state officials. Uh, so all, all uh, good success, I think, and, and good feedback uh, so far. Yeah, I was going to compliment you, Dwayne, on running a really good forum throughout the day and and keeping everything on time but but then you complimented yourself at the very end so well cuz i, I, I am never good you. at keeping on time and things <laughs> always flow over and i was like wow i'm actually on time yeah. and no, it, the panels were on time so i was and i it was pretty tight timing uh, half an hour wasn't much but it turned out to be right yeah so yeah that was that. it was great I, and i know that just seeing a little bit of the operation from the edge um boy that was a lot of stuff for you you and your team to organize and pull together and awesome. you know behind the scenes there was a lot of real-time learning <laughs> in the yeah. process. and I, I i channel a little bit of stephanie just from these ecac meetings of knowing just the basics of a zoom webinar format and having participants and attendees and Oh yeah, just those logistics. This was the first one we ran, ah, uh, yeah. and it was a pretty large one, uh, and, and with some complexities. Uh, well, but we pulled it pulled it off in terms of the logistics. I, I will say we hired a um, a consultant that provides consulting services through this just on an hourly basis to help us with uh, uh, some of the basics and questions questions all along the way. Uh, we did have, uh, you know, it was a little bit complicated too because we had ASL, American Sign Language signers um, involved. Uh, uh, um, there, and I think it it worked reason it worked okay. I mean, they they like to have more um, no, of uh, of the of the information, the speakers, the powerpoints, and so forth. And uh, so they bared with us, but um, uh, but um, yeah it all seemed to work out okay. So thank you everybody too for participating. One of the things that I would like to, I guess, hear about, and I guess is a proposal or idea for ECAC is updates on that legislation as it passes through the channels, um, what's included, what's been dropped, how it's changed. Um, that I understand that's going to, so yeah, that would be sort of the big thing. Is there, Dwayne is not going to be part of the committee after the end of this month, but is there another way we could sort of get that information and perhaps act as a conduit to share that with, with people in the town? So perhaps that could be part of an education and outreach effort. Um, the timeline on that, Dwayne, are they actually going to try to vote on, you think, bring something for votes this summer? Is that... Yeah, I mean, what often happens is um, it all comes down to the final day, quite frankly, which is July thirtieth or thirty first or whatever. Um, uh, but they're working on it all, all during this process, and they're working on it now. Okay. Um, so I think if you know it, they could vote on it bef well before July thirty first, but it's probably not going to be the case. Um, and so yeah, I think having updates. I mean, one option might be to. Um, 
reach out either either to to Representative Dobbs or Senator Comerford's office staff. Uh, we have some good contacts here. I'm sure Stephanie does too, uh, who might be appropriate staff people to um, uh, maybe invite to an ECAC to get an update um, uh, if they'd be so willing um, or to uh, just stay on their list. Uh, Which, do you have bill numbers? Uh, or or um, reach out to um, have an ECAC meeting to try to, for one of you to get an update and to relay that to the to the group. Do you have bill numbers? What are we talking about? Yeah, is that 4501 and 4502? No bill numbers, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And this is in the House or the Senate? Those are House bill numbers. House bill numbers. And do you know where these are now? Are they in committee? Are they in, are, what stage are they in? And is there a Senate bill, similar Senate bills? I'm not sure. Um, I think they it's probably in front of the TUE committee, which is a joint committee. So I don't know exactly how they work uh, in terms of whether they, they, they probably look at either the House or the Senate version together. I bet we can get, um, it, it would be interesting to hear more about this. I have no idea what's in those bills or I, I did not unfortunately um, have a chance to go to the, um, forum yesterday. I may try to listen to it once it's posted. Um, but I would be curious to hear more about that. So maybe we can get someone from one of their um, offices to give us an update at some point. I want to read a little more about it first, though. So I suspect others may want to do the same. Yeah, there, were, there was a lot that came out of the um, citing commission that had their report a couple months ago. Um, but as I gathered from conversations yesterday, the legislation is adopting some of the recommendations, but not others and making changes. So it, it seems like it's in a bit of flux. And that was some of the concern of residents participating yesterday. It's like, well, is this included or is this not? Or how much is what's the threshold for this pushing it to this process or that process? Um, yeah, so absolutely. It's, yeah, it's in flux. And I'm not, and some of it may not need legislation, so it's hard to, mm. hard to, hard to say where everything will land. But yeah, that'd be nice if there's a way that we could keep on top of it and even help citizens in Amherst um, stay on top of it too. Right. It there's some fairly significant ideas in the proposals, whether they make it to the end or not, I don't know. But it has to do a lot with how, particularly for Western Mass, how larger ground mount solar facilities get approved and it's a combination of ideas for consolidating approval at the local level and also some possibilities of moving those approvals to a statewide board um, with various ways of keeping the local government and local people involved. So you'll hear some people say it's you know, stripping control away from local governments and that's bad. Um, it's it's not entirely that, um, but it's not quite clear yet. So it is an issue of of I think of a lot of local interest for those paying attention at least. Yeah. Maybe we can Dwight, uh, invite Dwayne back to uh, present to the ECAC in July. <laughs> so one of the. Um, things that this controversy makes me think about is I get very, um, I probably shouldn't, well, I don't know if I should mention this now or not, but I, I was I was hiking, I have a Memorial Day hike that I like to do because of all of the uh, lady slippers. There's a whole mountainside, or there was an entire mountainside. I've never seen anything like it. Thousands upon thousands of pink lady slippers. Hmm. Uh, this is Round Top Mountain in in Athol, Bear's Den, Bear's Den uh, Conservation Area. And this year I climbed up over the top of Round Top, got to the observation tower, started walking down the east side where the flowers are, and they had clear cut the whole thing. <laughs> for what purpose was it cut, do you know? Oh, they're claiming it's for the birds. They're, they're doing something to restore bird, bird, but there's plenty of meadow there, so it doesn't make any sense. And oh. I'm, I'm sure it was just 60 years and it's time to harvest it. Because that's what we do in, in Massachusetts. We harvest the forest every 60 years. And yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, 
it's <laughs> if you harbor even i think private land so, you have to file yeah. a um a, a forest cutting plan well it's afall it it's afall owned it, it's owned by the town of afall okay then it has to go through a, a, a somewhat rigorous uh forest cutting plan yeah. to meet certain thresholds and there is reason and there is that, that in place that that's sort of my point is that is that we have this process in place yeah um as sad as it as it often seems to me personally um there is a process for this um anyway i'll keep my mouth shut now i have it's obviously very complicated you know what do you what do you use land for and how do you use it and who gets to control it uh, yeah that sort of thing is not part of this clean energy siting yeah. legislation that was sort of the focus of the forum yesterday and of these bills that we were just talking about um so yeah forest management that's another separate issue yeah. about how to go forward with that and i'm just i'm looking i there was just a new report coming out um by an, again a, a group of many familiar peoples on sort of forest management in massachusetts and it was a recommendation <laughs> report I'm not sure where it's going or what's happening with it. Um, that is, is it, 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 the Massachusetts Climate Forestry Committee report. It came out in January of 2024. Uh, they they have a bunch of recommendations, although I've only read parts of it. The uh, it's noted that there was vigorous debate and disagreement among the participants and on some policies, yeah. and that included you know levels of management active versus passive forestry management and you know when when which is appropriate and whether one is better for wildlife or better for carbon sequestration or better for this or for that yeah um, try so to yeah you might find that interesting yourself Lori. i'll see if i can find a link and send that yeah. on i try to keep in mind that 200 years ago there would have been no forests anywhere well, else here <laughs> so, that's right yeah. It's a different, different, anyway, onward. Um, next on the agenda. I have a question real quick, because I know like kind of bringing it back to locally. So mm -hmm. like there's this, the Shootsbury Road solar project, correct? Yeah. Where does, I know that project, I feel like has been on hold for a lot, for a while. Is, do we have an update on what the holdup is on that and what, where that might be stuck in sort of negotiation with between either the town or I can give a quick I, I from what I gather um it was held up in part because of just some design specifications and also um I think there was some more information that the conservation commission had requested so um, I, it's not, I think it was stalled, but I don't think it's gone away. This is in Shootsbury. Well, it's also it's, partly in Amherst. I think it's, it's, oh, yeah, Amherst. I think it's partly Amherst, Amherst as well. It's Shootsbury Road and okay. it crosses both. It has implications for Amherst and Shootsbury. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, and it's a very large scale project. Um, but I, I, as far as I know, um, it's still moving forward. I just think it was stalled, but um, I can double check. I, I feel like I heard recently just some mutterings that it was going through planning review again, like it had come back again, so, and zoning. So let me find out, Michael, and I can give an update. That would I'll be interesting. I'll okay. email just to let you know. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, other comments, questions, anything about solar to discuss? If not, uh, we're up to transportation, but Tony's not here. Um, I will only say that as it's becoming bicycling season again, and I've been bicycling around more and more, I have noticed these wonderful signs that have gone up in Montague <laughs> and Franklin County that have bicycles get four feet, says bicycles get four feet or something like that. Big yellow signs, well-placed on a lot of narrow roads all over uh, Montague, Turner's Falls, that area. 
Um, and in other parts of, <clears throat> where is it? Uh, I think Hadley and Sunderland and uh, I'm trying to think where else, there are great bicycles printed on the road. You know, it says share the road with big bicycles printed on the road. And I have to take a picture of all of these different signs because the only sign I can find in Amherst on Pelham Road anyway, is hidden behind a tree and has been for years. <laughs> and you don't even see it until you're on top of it. So um, on top of the road being unrideable, uh, it's also just not even well marked for bikes. But um, I will come with a bunch of pictures next time, or maybe I'll bring them to the tack. <laughs> Uh, Laurie, so I, I have I have seen those signs, and I believe there's at least one in Amherst on West Bay Road. As oh. you're, it's just barely inside of Amherst, and it's on a really crappy section of road that I avoid now um, yeah. for bicycling. It's narrow, it's a hill, and it, it's just full of potholes. I, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I've seen that, and it seems you like sure I've seen another one. You sure it's not in Belchertown? No, this is on, so this is just after, if you're heading into oh. Amherst from Hadley. It's just oh, after. Oh, that side. Yeah, West Bay Road. Ah, okay. Um, so it's well. adjacent to um, Hampshire College before you get to Atkins Market if you're coming in that way. All right. So there is one. Yeah. <laughs> and I, yeah, and I've seen it. I, I notice them on, on the road. And I have the sense that people are giving more passing. Many people are giving more passing space. Um, some cars now are slowing. We'll stay behind until there is room to pass with four or more feet of space. It's my pool noodle doing it. <laughs> no, although I have to say I did get um, almost swept off the road by it was an Amherst College security vehicle passing me on Southeast Street at the top of a blind hill, uh, going well over the speed limit, and you know, I was very annoyed by that. But uh, yeah, it's scary. Stay safe. <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, Lori, I, um, sorry yeah. to jump in, but um, Tony did send me an email message saying that he was. Um, coming back from the airport and he was going to try to join around now. So, I mean, we, okay, might, we, he does join, we might want to come back to transportation when he comes right. in. So going on then, um, I don't have any other regional state policy um, updates, uh, although I will keep try to keep track of the bills that were just mentioned. Uh, so we're on to network geothermal or Laura, whatever else you have that might be interesting for us. Yeah, I don't have much. <laughs> um, I shared an, an article, Stephanie shared an article about the um, Framingham. Framingham. In the Gazette? In the Gazette? Um, no, I don't, if it's in the Gazette, that's great too. This yeah. was somewhere else. Is that about the Framingham project? Yeah, it is. Town Experiments with Community Heating Cooling, and it's about Framingham. And it's in the Gazette, I think, in the last day or so. Oh, great. June 4th. Um, yeah, it may be the same article because this is also from June 4th. I don't know. Anyway, um, it's in your email. Uh, but I haven't, you know, I've looked at this project occasionally, but I haven't done any more digging into it. So, um, I can tell you one of my neighbors put this, I don't get the Gazette, <laughs> but my neighbor put this in my mailbox with a note oh, funny. <laughs> whether we could do this in our neighborhood. Um, which is an interesting thought. <laughs> I think they're yeah. neighborhoods. I mean, I do think it's worth, I, I don't think it's our team. I don't know who could look into it really. Um, I mean, you need, I think the, pro, I don't think it would work in your neighborhood because for no. this work, it would have to be, it, there has to be some commercial buildings. Yeah. Um, which is why it's such a good thing for the colleges and all the colleges are doing it. So that's great. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, I do think there's potential in downtown area or with some of the schools to maybe consider it if we had some, to be able to do so. I think some of the housing developments too in the area, some of the bigger apartment complexes, older complexes, maybe. Um, but yeah, something to think about. So if nothing else, let's move on to item five, which is the ECAC summer meeting schedule. Stephanie, do you wanna take that? Um, sure, happy to, just to say that I've only heard from a few people and I know some of you don't know your schedules, but 
Um, I think we there were two dates that are coming up that we, Lori and I discussed that maybe she wants to sort of take this portion of it along, but um, the yeah. two meeting dates coming up, June 19th, which is our scheduled as our next meeting, is actually Juneteenth and it's a holiday. So we would not be able to meet that day. And then the um, meeting after that is July 3rd, which is not really an optimum meeting date either. So Lori, you wanna take, Take over. Yeah, I, I was going to suggest going to an every three week schedule, which puts us just for a short time between like instead of meeting, our next meeting would be the 19th. Instead of meeting on Juneteenth, meeting on the 26th. And then again on the 17th, which puts us back on our regular schedule. So we skip one meeting by going to an every three weeks. Right. And we without having to change the day, there's only one meeting that's weird, which is the one that would be on uh, June 26th. So how did June 26th work for folks? I will be away. Just letting you know. Well, Stephanie, you're away that day. Um, OK, so that's complicated. So then maybe that week just is it possible to do maybe a Thursday that are you are you gone that whole week or just that day or. So what I what we had discussed um, was instead of the 19th, maybe having the meeting on the 20th, 20th. And not necessarily going every three weeks, but just do the 20th and then skip the July 3rd meeting. One. Yep. And then go from there. How does that work for folks? Doing Thursday, the 20th skipping the third and then going back on our regular schedule. The Anybody? 20th for me, I would, I'm tentative because I'm traveling for work. So I, depending on my travel schedule, I'm kind of a tentative guess there. What was Tony's schedule like on that day, Stephanie? Um, He was gone a lot this summer. Yeah, he's gone a lot. Um. That actually seems like a date he might be able to do. Okay. So my- um, I will be attending the- Oh, is my internet working? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay. I'll be at the Battle of the Bot Botanicals. So, and other people should be too. But if oh, you've got exactly. tickets for that, you will be there. Uh -huh. So uh, I won't be able to- Okay, so the 20th doesn't work so well. What about the 18th? What about the 18th? Does that work? Not really. I mean, I could probably make it work, but that is um, a launch event for our University of New Hampshire Sustainability Institute Fellows, and it's in New Hampshire, so I'm actually going to New Hampshire. Um, okay. But I could maybe try to be better. Like maybe if we moved our, if we moved our meeting to 5.30 to 7.30, I could, I could probably do the 18th. That would be okay. There's a local energy advocates um, meeting then, but I can skip that one. So I could do that. But how does it work for everybody else? 5.30, what do people think? 5.30 on the 18th? Anyone not make that one? It's a really bad week with the end of school. Like, Is that the last week of school? Yeah. For me, anyway, it may not be bad for other people, but it's the end of school picnic at the kids' school that night. I mean, we've done this before, but it, you know, except it means this would be the last meeting for Dwayne and Jesse, but I was going to say it could be that we skip you know, we just skip the next couple of meetings and then resume. So, yeah, I'd rather try to get one more meeting in with Dwayne and Jesse, <laughs> if possible. Um, Cause it's going to get even harder to get a quorum after that. Right. I'm gone from the, just so you know, I'm gone from the 22nd to July 6th. So I'll be away for two weeks. But it has to be sometime that week. So I think we're stuck with that 18th, even though it's a hard week. Could we do that? If we I'm happy to make a cameo on July 17th if that's the next <laughs> meeting. <laughs> and if I'm allowed. <laughs> why, don't, why don't we try for 5.30 on the 18th? Do we have do we have five people here right now who can be there then? 
One, two, three. Did well. Um, I can yes. What about the seven? What about Monday the seventeenth? Better for me. Oh, Monday the seventeenth. Yeah, that works too. Could um, I'm just wondering. Well, I know people are working, so I don't know how this would be to try to do it earlier. It's Maybe have a shorter meeting. I mean, I I can do earlier, but that's because it's summer and I'm an academic, so I don't know. I I, I think others might not be able to. Um, can we stick with the four thirty time, or is that a problem, Stephanie? For the seventeenth? Yeah. Um, it's not great for me, but I could make it work. I'll have to reschedule something, but I can probably make it work. So Monday the seventeenth at four thirty. How many people could make that one? Yeah. yeah um, no good. Three, four five. Michael. Six. So we got okay. So so Laura, you won't be able to be there, but I think maybe let's try for that. Um, if we made it earlier in the day, how many people do we lose? Who do we lose earlier in the day? Or do we gain anyone? If we did like three to five. Three to five? Who can make it three to five on the 17th? Uh, hold on, let me check. Yeah, I could probably do that. Steve, how about you? Can you um yeah. can you all either raise yeah. your hand or yeah, I think I think we're okay. I think Laura can't can't do it. Okay. So you could do five. So if you did three to five on the 17th. So yeah, let's do three to five then. E C A C. And that means that uh, and that will be I'm gonna cancel the one here. Let me put it here. This event. This is 3 to 5, 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. Save. Okay, and then we are not going to meet on the 3rd of July. So no meeting on the 19th and no meeting on the 3rd, July right. 10th. No meeting on the 19th, no meeting on the 3rd. And the 17th will be the last meeting with um, Jesse and Dwayne. I wish we could have a cake. <laughs> I could I could I could get a cake for myself. <laughs> we'll send everybody insomnia cookies or something. Everybody bring a cupcake. Everybody bring a cupcake. I'll deliver cupcakes to everybody that day. <laughs> well, there we go. Is we there... did that when we had the online outreach as we were developing the climate action plan. They they That's brought right. a meal around to all of us so we could enjoy a meal together over Zoom. Yes, oh, we did. Great. That that's was great. quite the coordinating feat. Yes. <laughs> Stephanie, do you have time to drive four and a half hours? Because I'll be in Dammer, Scott, and Maine. <laughs> um, oh, but I could have my own cupcake, so it's okay. I'll there, just send you all a virtual cupcake. How's that? <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. So um, items for the next meeting agenda. Let's see. Oh, wait, no, I so skipped. Sorry. Uh, member recruitment. Okay. The next thing on the list is member recruitment. And what I wanted to ask is that we have this list from Tony uh, and we added a few things to it. And I would really like, you know, we, we really do need to replace, <laughs> it's gonna be, we can't replace Jesse and, and Dwayne, but we can try to find new members of ECAC that have some of the same skills, um, some. <laughs> so I think we really need to be reaching out and we all have that list. I can share it. I have it up here somewhere, I think. Yes, I will. I I will send a um, an email out to Western Mass AIA and the AIA Council on the Environment co form. Excellent. And sort of say what I've been doing, and with the idea of getting another architect. Um, Excellent. That, that group that group is beyond Amherst, but. Right. But, there, but I, I know there are a handful of people from that group that live in live in Amherst. So that that's the one that I thought could work. And, and I think those people, that there could be a ripple effect of right. um, there. We'll certainly right. hit all the fir firms in town. Right. And um, it's here. Share. Why is it here? <clears throat> um, there's this list, which if I can, oh 
man, I can't grab it. I'm trying to make it readable. Oh, there it is. Got it. Readable by me. There's this list that um, Tony provided. And what I just guess I'd like to ask everyone to do, and I think we need to coordinate a little bit because we don't want them to be getting, well, I maybe it doesn't matter that much. But I, I, I think if you're on any of these, if you have any connection with any of these groups, um, like for Sorry, example- can I interrupt? We're not seeing anything. We're just seeing sure. you done top. Oh, 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 stop share. Hang on a minute. Let me try that again. Share. Lori, as you pull that up, would, would it make sense for to create like a job posting of sorts? Are we allowed to do that and sort of like um something so that it, there's consistent idea. consistent messaging? Everyone, you know, just a real simple thing with a that link that takes you right to the yep. um, sign up page on the website. So you're saying that you want some text that you can send to people and post wherever. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, any of us. And so we are all posting essentially the same thing. And maybe there's individuals we reach out to like a, a specific pitch, but but there's a simple, okay. concise. Um, so what I suggest is that uh, I can go ahead and write something. And Stephan oh, Stephanie, you have your hand up. Yeah, I was just going to actually suggest that, um, it, I mean, it's if you know specific people, maybe you just want to direct them to, there's a, um, on the town's website, there's an in the news article that the town manager is looking for people to volunteer for committees. So I think you should link to that. Um, again, you want to be kind of careful because this is, you know, this is a town committee appointed, you're appointed by the town manager. So I don't know that I, it's one thing when you know somebody specifically and you want to reach out to those people, but I would just say, if you're going to send something to the organization, just let them know that the town is looking for people and then give the link to that article and do it that way rather than, I don't think you should be writing anything up sort of separately. You could just say the ECAC is one of the committees looking and, you know, for more information, ask them to reach out to the um, town manager's office. Would you object to us saying something personal about, you know, what we, that we enjoyed, what we got out of being on it and what we thought was great about being on it or something like that? Because it seems awfully impersonal. Nobody's going to pay any attention to it if all we do is send them a link. I think that's fine. I, uh, but I would ask that you please send it to me to vet through the town manager's office to make okay. sure that it's okay. So why don't I write something up really short, Stephanie, and send it to you and that because we got to say something. We can't just send a link, right? So well, I yeah, I was saying say something about the committee. You know, yeah. very basic though, and you know about. But like I said, you can write what you want, and then I can send it to um, the town manager's office. Because even not, like I don't just send things out. <laughs> like I, things that I send, you know, are often reviewed. I don't just do press releases; they get reviewed. We don't. We actually have a new communications manager that's going to be starting soon. So in the future, this kind of thing will actually all be going through them. So that's why I'm just saying, if you want to draft something, that's fine. Just send it to me. And if it gets edited down, I can send it back to you, Lori. And if you're okay with it, then it can go out or it can go back to the committee. I don't know. All right. I'll, I'll send something to you. I'll, I'll, it's a little more complicated than I would have hoped, but I, I think so. So I think the message here is if you know individuals that you want to write to, you can just send them whatever you want. But if you're sending to a list that's not just a few people that you know, then it needs to get vetted. That's what I'm hearing? Yes. All right. That's annoying but workable. <laughs> so let me go ahead and, and uh, I'll, I'll write something and then you'll vet it and you know send it to whoever needs to see it. And then I'll send that to ECAC. Don't remember not to reply. It's just for you guys to reach out to your networks. Um, meanwhile, feel free to, you know, send notes to your personal, um, I think if you have a personal community that you communicate with on a regular basis, there shouldn't be any problem with sending them something simple. Um, 
So Jesse, I, I think if it's, if it's a professional list that you participate in, I can't imagine that would be a problem, would it, Stephanie? If it's a personal communication, no. If it's somebody you know personally, that's fine. But it, but but since there's already a the article, I I think drawing drawing attention to the article seems pretty pretty good. That that seem, that I would think you could do, right? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, and, and I think all right. Our our names, I think, from most you know, our names rep represent a lot. Yeah. So even with that, even without a a statement, an unapproved statement, yeah. I think there's value. Can you send? Okay, so let me stop sharing this. Can you send a link to that um to that article then? So yes. On the same yeah. page. Okay. Good. I will do that. All right, and then I'll write something around it and. Make sure it's okay before I send it out to whoever I can find. And uh, meanwhile, I'll try to contact just some folks I know locally. And I think everybody should be doing this. We really need to get folks involved. All right, onward. Staff updates, or the staff updates. Um, well, I've already given you kind of the primary one. Uh, I don't really have much more than the last meeting in terms of things moving forward. Bike share is moving forward slowly. Um, CCA is moving forward slowly. <laughs> um, uh, the heat pump program, we're going to be hopefully making the selection and recommendation to the town manager by the end of the week. Um, and so I think um, that's kind of it right now. Oh, I'm sorry. I do have one thing. Uh, the fellow who is doing the greenhouse gas emissions fleet vehicle inventory started on Monday. Her name Ooh. is Mindy Gala. She's wonderful and um, very enthusiastic to get going. We've been working on getting her the information that she needs. Uh, we went over to DPW today to get a whole bunch of um, vehicle fuel use inventory uh, data. So it's been, yeah, it's been great. She's What's already on it. Her name is Honey Gala. G-A-L-A? G-A-L-A, yes. Great name. Yeah, she's got a great name. <laughs> but hopefully at some point, um, she will be doing a presentation sort of at the end to the town manager, and I may ask her to, if we can fit it into her schedule, get her to appear in one of these meetings. Cool. Okay, any additional member updates? I think that's next, right? Yep. I think one of the things that's gonna make it hard for us to recruit this time around is uh, the fact that it's getting time to be involved in the uh, presidential election. And a lot of folks who are activists are now consumed by that <laughs> and hopefully will be and will be hopefully with a good outcome. So there's been a lot going on in that realm lately. Any updates, no updates? Okay, items for the next agenda. Don't think I heard anything new. Anything new that we should put on the schedule, or just leave it pretty much as is. We I mean, I would, I would ask the question, Laurie, is if, if you want Dwayne or I to uh, to reflect on five years on the committee, and um, I, I don't want to waste anyone's time. With my oh. own y yammering, but if, if if for any reason that seemed valuable, I think um, that would be great. <laughs> not to not to make put more on Dwayne's plate, but <laughs> I can reflect. <laughs> if you send me the PowerPoint in advance, and all, <laughs> yeah, <exactly>. yeah. <laughs> I'd appreciate a farewell speech. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that would be great. We should definitely have that on the agenda. 
Um, we also <laughs> last time started to talk about the next, we've had a couple of ideas thrown out there for presentations. Um, last time, I think it was something aimed at the, at, at the business community around PACE, but there was something that came up also around Laura, I think you had, someone had suggested something, I think it might've been in the minutes and I can't think of what it was right now. I mean, was one of them the community choice? Well, we're gonna have UCCA. Presentation, right? Like that's yeah. very relevant. <laughs> that's gonna have to happen. It will happen. I just don't know if it's in time for the next meeting. Yeah. All right, so maybe, well, let's leave it as is. Uh, and for the meeting after that, we'll start discussing in earnest what, if anything, we should be doing a presentation on. Um, well, Laurie, I just want to be clear. Yeah. Um, I leave tomorrow morning for my 50th college reunion, and I go from there <laughs> main so you will not get anything from me on pace on okay. the 17th so okay, we can take that I, off the agenda for the next meeting i right? will be at the meeting from maine but okay. I, that's yeah okay so unless someone else has something we'll take that off the agenda i think i mean just for Jesse and Duane, I mean, I guess it's also like, hey, like over, like on some of these topics, if there's like important resources, links, contacts that you, that you would want to transition over to people in this, um, or into this group. So kind of as we, as you all transition, um, kind of smoothly trying to have some of us make sure that that we don't lose that information, or at least there's a resource that we can go to to kind of educate ourselves where you all already are experts or very involved <laughs> in those areas. Maybe it's just something to think about for the next meeting and doesn't, maybe it doesn't even have to be by June 17th, but over the course of the summer per se. Yeah. I might, I might even call that like sort of like a general topic that's just sort of like building institutional knowledge or like right. sort of how, how do we caretake the work in, in something that is designed for turnover. Yep. Yep. It's a good topic. Hmm. Other... Do you have on your list, Lori, the um, updates of the energy siting legislation we talked about earlier tonight? I will make sure that is, we have general regional policy, but let's put that on there specifically. Updates of right. regional um, solar siting. Yeah, that that you know, might take reaching out to, as Duane suggested, um, to Mindy Domes or Comerford's office to find if there's a person within those offices that might be willing to come and do an overview in a public meeting for, with us. That was one of the things we were thinking about doing, do an overview. Okay, I got to get a little bit educated on that. If there's somebody else who wants to take responsibility for that, even better, um, because I've actually been getting calls for heat pump coaching now. Ah, one of them nice. from the uh, from my booth at the... <laughs> at the um, festival, the sustainability festival, and another one just in my neighborhood, someone looking for help um, posted to the neighborhood list. So I've been getting actually a little busy with that, um, but I will do this if no one else wants to put it on their schedule, I will keep try to keep track of this legislation. Okay, in that case, I think we are come to the last thing before adjournment, which is public comment. Oh, we have no attendees. We had one attendee most of the meeting, but it looks like um, since we have no attendees, there will be no public, con uh, public attendees, there'll be no public comment. So the next thing is an adjournment. 
So next enough. meeting, just a reminder, next meeting then is Monday, June 17th from 3 to 5 p.m. Right. Or 3 to 4.30 or however long it takes us. <laughs> Which means we should meet before Friday, Stephanie. So let's find a time. Yes, next week. Yeah, we'll email. Right. Thanks to everybody. Yep. Take care. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.